Hey, what's up everybody? This is your girl Melly and thank you for tuning in to my channel. If it's your first time watching this, you're a first time viewer or a subscriber, I want to say thank you and feel welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for the love. Thank you for watching, for subscribing. Thank you for liking and commenting my videos. Can you take your time to share this to your loved ones and your friends? And let's grow together let's be blessed together my prayer for each and every one of you watching this is that God may increase and enrich you in every way may all your prayers and our desire be met this time this year this day this hour this second because he's a God of now so right to dig into why I'm doing this today this is the first time I'm doing the one-on-one -on -one kind of thing I thought it would be nice to do it this way because it's a way that I'll just kind of answer most of the questions that I've been receiving on very uh, various platforms on my social media and directly from YouTube on every place I've been sharing my channel. And uh, I thought it would be nice to kind of just have a one-on-one -on -one, and this is why I opted to just look for time to kind of do this. Not just a question. There are different questions that I've received on all my social media platforms that I've been trying to send my links of my channel on my Instagram, WhatsApp, and Facebook mostly. And I will receive kind of the same kind of questions from different people. Some of my friends that people who have known me for a while and they didn't know where I was. And they're like, oh, you're in the, here, you're there. What, what, what's up? I mean... So all these questions, I'm kind of putting them together and they put me in a place where I just have to say this. This is why I'm doing this. My story, my experience. How did I get here? Three years later, my experience, my relocation and how is life out here? So I'm kind of going to just go answer it in a way that is a testimony or a way to inspire or encourage everybody watching this. And uh, just to get to know who I am in general, because I started this channel uh, let me see. Oh, 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 oh. It's almost going to five weeks since I started. If you can go down to my channel and see the first video that I posted of how to start a message, it will be a month now. And the support has been overwhelming. The, the, the support that I received, especially from my American people. Oh my God. Thank you so much, America. Thank you so much, Kenyan people. Thank you so much for those who, even I don't know who you were, you've always been there, returning subscribers all over the world. My God, when I check the views there from Canada, United Kingdom, China, I saw China, I saw Russia, I saw, oh my God, I saw, um, what is this country down south, South American, Brazil. I saw those countries, I was overwhelmed. I was like, oh my God, thank you, Jesus, because... This is your doing. I was like, it's it's already there. It's already there. I'm seeing only 300 subscribers, but I'm seeing people from all over the world. And it's represented well. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody who is here. And all your questions, I'm going to try to answer them today. Hope I will. If not, we have so many videos coming, and I'll be trying to answer them as we go. Let's grow together as we support each other on this. Thank you so much, guys. Hope this, my desire for this channel, again, is that it will inspire everybody. It will encourage everybody. It will fill people up in different ways, in a way they feel they want to bounce back to life. They want to, you know, rise up. You know, they want to be there doing what they were called to do. You know, being aligned to their destiny for people who are feeling hopeless to get their hope back. For those who are feeling discouraged to get their courage back. back. For those who feel like they are, oh, my back is against the wall. I don't know what to do. They find there's a Jesus who can just hold them up, you know. And, and this is why we are doing this. We are doing this so that we can just talk to each other and build each other. And it's already happening, guys. The conversation that I've been having one-on-one -on -one outside this video already tells me why God has told me to do this. I'm being encouraged because I've been answering different people in different ways on how they can do simple things, especially on the migration process. And uh, many other things, they want to know how is the journey, how did you even get there, Millie? We know you from there and there, and here you are they looking like this and doing this. So my life should be a testimony to everybody out there watching this. Be filled with the Spirit of God that will lift you up in places that you never even thought you can be. The Holy Ghost is our help. He is our friend. He is our reminder. He is our comfort. He's there to teach us, he's there to remind us, he's there to reveal so much that is hidden. And things can just change within a twinkle of an eye. And that is the story of my life. This is the story of my life, guys. If you could ask me, let me see, in 2017 or 2018 or even 2019, 
that I'm going to be living in the U.S. and just feeling the blessings of God all over me the way I am right now. I will tell you, yes, I was, I was, I was blessed where I was in Kenya. I was blessed. I was living a good life. God blessed me. But this is more. It's better. It's, you know, the Bible says your latter days are going to be greater, better than your former days. So every day that is ahead of us is better. It's, we are not going back. We move from glory to glory. We move from favor to favor, you know. We move higher. We don't go back, you know. So that's what we believe in as Christians are born again. Christians. Okay. The first question that I think I need to start with before I go to something else Many people say, I've gone through all your videos, but I'm not able to tell who you are. Um, who are you, Millie? Who are you? So again, I can say this in a very easy way. I'm sorry, guys, for the confusion because it's not straightforward. But if you've watched most of my videos, somehow, somehow I've mentioned who I am, where I am, which state I am, which city I am. If you've watched most of them, it's kind of there everywhere, you know. But just in this video, I'm going to put them together. I'll put them together to kind of make it easy so that you don't have to search who is this girl. Okay. This is Millie Sego. I am Millie Sego. Sego is my husband's name. Before marriage, many people know me as Millie Wanyinya. Wanyinya is my dad's name. Millicent is my full name. Okay. So commonly I've grown up being called Millie, but officially I'm Millicent Wanyinya. Okay, hope that answers. I'm a Kenyan girl born and raised in Kenya. I was born in a small town called Magadi Soda. Born, raised, and educated there, my lower primary level in Magadi. Then in high school, I moved to the central part of Kenya. Magadi is in the North Rift side of Kenya. Okay, basically, that's uh, where I was born. And uh, yes, I'm a Kenyan girl. Kenyan girl who relocated to the US and I came here because uh, and I'm married to uh, an American citizen. He's an American born and raised. He's an American, not an African. Many people see the Sago name and they're like, where is he from? So my husband, he's an American, black American, okay? Born, raised from here. They are family, family, families and families. They are all... You know, you know their story, guys. Any black American, you know their story. Of course, all of them, they came from Africa. But now, because they are here, they're black American. So my husband is, a, is an American, is a black American. That name throws many people off, but he's not from any part of Africa. No, no, none of his family, no. Oh, oh. sorry to say that. They're from Africa, centuries and centuries back. Centuries back, centuries, guys, before. Before slavery, okay, but now they're just here, they're okay. So I hope that answered most of the questions that for many people have been saying. I've been trying to find who you are. So again, I'm Millie Sego, a Kenyan girl born and raised, but came to the U.S. through marriage, okay. I'm married to an American citizen, a black American citizen, and uh, before marriage I was known as Millie but now my official name is Millie Sego. Hope that answers. I'm a mother, again, of four kids blended together. Okay. Yep. Hope that is simple and clear. Hope that is simple and clear, guys. I'm a mother. I'm a mother. Yeah. So, again, next question. The next question is... Uh, how many years have you been there? How is life there generally? Guys, there is a culture shock. When you hear of culture shock, it's real. I've been here counting. I came, went back, and I came again. If I count well, I'm counting all uh, 2019 to now. That is four years. I'm, I think almost, or is it four years already? So I've been here for close to four years. And life is different. No, mm -mm. it is different, guys. Life is different. The American dream that we hear about before we come here, what we hear and what we see is different, guys. But it's a good life. Why do I say that? Opportunities are much more than any other place I've ever thought of. 
there's so much there's so much available i mean there are many many opportunities that can enable you to become what you want you know you're not really tuned into education to prosper you can do anything there are so many opportunities for you to just stretch out and reach out and be what you are that's the good part about america and it's so easy to live an american dream if you're not a lazy person i repeat again it's so easy to live an american dream if you are not a lazy person and you put god ahead of everything it's easy guys we have to be focused when you come here thick skin then you see that you put this here you develop a thick skin and you focus that's the thing i can tell you in short you close your ears develop a thick skin and focus because it is very different from my country when i came here there was a lot of culture shock there was just so much going on different from what we saw from the movies it's different the reason why i say this it's because <laughs> i don't know how to put it guys but oh my god you can hear so much until you lose focus you lose it this is how we did it when we came this is how we did it when we came the reason why i'm saying that is because every migrant who comes here especially from africa people believe you have to do nothing people believe you have to be a nurse you have to enter into the medical work, uh, world to make it. Who say that? You see? So when you come, know what you want. Of course, men, nursing is... Of course, it pays good. But there are other things that pay good. I didn't go... I didn't do that. I mean... I went back to my corporate world. I was used to corporate world. I thought of nursing because everybody was telling me that... And it was not my thing. I tried it, but... Did for... What do they call it? no i couldn't even it's not my thing so many people even drop what they believe in their passion their everything because everybody say be a nurse you have to be a nurse go back be a cna and all that if it's your thing that is good perfect go for it guys it works it pays good it pays good but there are many other things that pay good too many other jobs and careers here in the u.s there are many oh my god there are so many that pay so good okay so you just have to do your thing that's why i'm saying people can confuse you they will confuse you guys if you're especially if you're from africa and i think even filipinos most of them believe that too so just do your thing and just focus don't be lazy okay i'm answering me I'm, I'm trying this to answer don't be lazy focus put this develop a thick skin you live the american dream okay be financial let me start again let's let's do this again okay close your ears and focus develop a thick skin Be financially stable, not stable discipline. Finan so to just simply answer, how did I come to the U.S.? I came through a visa called B1, B2 visa. It is a tourism visa that I used and I was invited by my now husband to come and visit. And the only way it was easy, I believe until now, it's because he had already come to Kenya before. To visit us in Kenya he came to visit and tour our country and uh, when I went to the embassy to apply for a visit to the US to see and visit him and tour around and him being the contact person it kind of made it easier okay so it was a B1 B2 visa it's a tourism a visit visa that we use for a non-immigration visa so if you go to their site and you say B1 B2 visa whatever country you're watching this for it's available in every country you come to the united states of america using that visa if you want to visit or tour by the way you don't need to know anybody to tour america to visit you must know somebody you must have a contact person to tour ah uh, i don't know how you'll fill that form because there's a place they ask for an address of where you're going 
So if it's an hotel or a tourism place where you're going to tour, I mean, I don't know, that's where you'll put as the contact place. I don't know if you've booked the hotels and everything, they'll have to check that out. So for tourism, I'm not well uh, informed about that because for me, I did the visa part, but it's the same visa. They call it B1, B2. It's under the same category, not the same visa, under the same category. So for visit, you must have a contact person where they have a background check for both of you, you as the person going to visit and the person inviting you. So you can be okay with everything you have, but the person you're going to, to visit can be in bad books with the federal or the state. Okay? So it can be another reason why you're denied. You can be okay, then you wonder, why was I denied? It can be the person inviting you. So it's a two-way thing. They do their good background check. If he's not financially stable, he can be in good books, but his finances are not well off to support you well if you said that he's going to take care of all your costs. Because there's a place you have to prove who's going to take care of your of your stay. If you say the person inviting you and the person inviting you, they check and see that he's not really able to, because they, they have all that. You know, they file their tax here, they do their annual thing here, so they check all that, okay? Ah, so I believe I've answered that one, guys, uh, for the ones who are asking what kind of a visa that I use to come here in the U.S. Okay, uh, to kind of go back to my relocation. Okay, so um, what I can say, guys, is that my life is just a testimony. That's the best way I can put it. My life is a testimony. If you can ask me, let me say, let me try and go back in 2017 or 2018. Let me even say 2019. That I'll know what will happen to me in 2023, 2022 or 2020 or 2019 when I even uh, kind of know that I'm going to settle here. I wouldn't have tell you that. I didn't even know for a second that I'm going to be living in the U.S. But I knew that I have a friend who became more of a, my very close person, who is my husband now, is in the U.S. But just relocating and living here was never in my mind at that time. It was never there. So my process, my journey, I, it was just a flip. I'm sorry to answer it that way. And I've answered many people. My life was like a flip. You know when you wake up and God just give you a blessing. Ha! And you just ride with it. That's how my life and my relocation just came about, guys. Sorry to disappoint many people, but I didn't plan it. I didn't see. Did I see it coming? Yes. Did I pray about it? Um, at some point when I saw Chris and I knew there is Chris, yes, I prayed for it. I really prayed intensively for it because I loved him. We, we, had, we, had, we had been together for talking over the phone for a very long time. For a long time. For a very long time. A long time. And he even came to Kenya and came back, but I still didn't know how I was going to get here, you know. So it was just still there hanging in a balance, but I didn't know when it's going to happen. So I don't know if I'm answering the question, but this is what I'm going to say. My relocation to the U.S. to me, it was just like a flip. I did not know the process. I did not know which visa to use that time. Now I know everything. I am so well equipped. I can answer any question to anybody looking for answers. But that time, if you ask me, the only thing I could know is just a visit visa and that is the only thing that me and my husband now use for me to come and visit him here. So in 2018, I was able to come visit him, stayed for a couple of months. Was it two months or three months? Then I went back to Kenya. And then I had to come back, I think, 2019, the beginning or the end of... There, something like that. So that's how it happened, guys. And... Um, Hope I'm answering that question for many people. How did you relocate to the U.S.? It was a flip, guys. It was a flip. I did not plan. A blessing. It was a blessing. It just came. It just, everything just came and just, you know, there. Let's go. And everything happened as it was. So, um, 
You know when you, you put your life in God, if I can answer it that way, when you pray, when you know, you know the word of God says that before I formed you in your mama's womb, I knew you. I predestined you. Our life is already prearranged. Our end is already done, you know. There's an end before even the beginning. So ours is just to tune ourselves in and align ourselves into his purposes. And then we will not miss, we will not miss what is meant for us. And the best way to just to hear God and to be in tuned into this is to live a prayerful life, is to live a word, a life in the word of God, read the word of God, pray more, have a relationship with God, have a relationship with Jesus, have a relationship with the Holy Ghost, have a relationship, be in tune in one spirit. You know, I don't know how else to put it because that's the best way you can know what your life is all about. Sometimes we don't know they are relieved, re re revealed, sorry. It, our life is kind of a chapter. It's open like this, like a book, okay? You live like a chapter. So when you tune your life in God, you just move from one chapter to another, which has an end already, okay? So my life here was already predestined. It was already met. For me, it was just to tune in and I found myself flowing into the purposes of God. How else do I explain two different worlds, people born of two different mothers from different continents meeting in this way? It must be God. It must be God. And God did that, guys. Me meeting up and meeting up because the only way I came here to the U.S. now to answer another question, which visa did I use? I used a B1 visa. B1, B2 visa. That's a visa that you use when you want to visit or tour the US, like you come in as a tourist or a visitor. So it's called B1, B2 visa. Those are the, that's the visa that I applied. And uh, my husband now, then he wasn't my husband, just invited me. You need somebody to invite you basically because they'll need an address of where you're going, who you're visiting or where you're gonna tour, you know. So my husband had to give me an invitation and I had to go to their site, fill the form. It was DS what? I filled the form. Booked an appointment in our Nairobi Embassy, US Embassy now in Nairobi, Nairobi City in Kenya. The American Embassy in Nairobi, Kenya. That's where I went to do my uh my interview. It was so simple, guys. I I mean, it was I didn't even expect I had carried evidence. To just prove that hey i'm coming back but none of those things were even asked there were two three questions that i was asked that day and i was surprised that they didn't even ask for no document nothing nothing okay i think the only thing that made it easy is because chris had already come to kenya he came and visited me in 2016 he stayed there and he came back so when I said this is the person inviting me, it kind of made it easier when they did their background check and they saw who did he come to see here. He came to visit us, me and my people, family. So, and that's how it was easier for me to say I'm going to visit him. So that's one way I usually think that it made it easier because he had already come and now it was easier for me to be allowed to come visit him, him too. Of course, there are many ways plus... They look at they look at background check. They look who are you gonna visit? Financial support. I'd carried all those things, evidence to prove that you're going back because this is a non-immigrant visa. It's a non-immigrant visa. You have to prove that you're gonna go back to your country. If it's Kenya, you have to go back to Kenya. You have to prove what evidence, what weight do you have to show that you'll still come back? You'll still come back to your country, whatever country you you're, you're trying to uh, you're coming from. So. I think the only thing with this visa is to prove that you are, the weight of it is to prove that you'll still go back, you'll not come to the U.S. and stay. So those, that, those are the things they look at, the person you're going to visit, your financial support. If you have nobody inviting you and you're going in just as a tourist, the hotels that you're going to be sleeping, do you have enough money to support you? You know, you don't, they don't want you to come here and be stranded or be a burden to the state or to whoever you're going to be coming to. So... The, that financial support, the logistics of your stay generally is what they are looking at. As much as somebody has invited you, 
who is this person is the person working is the person legit is this person in a good it can be a drug addict it can be somebody who is in bad books with the state so as much as you're being invited by somebody who is an american or a permanent resident but they check the person and realize the person is in bad books with them again it can be a bad thing so it's two-way traffic guys who you are as a person going and who is that person you're going to visit they are very intense in that then in the question that they'll ask you across uh, the person interviewing you is generally just gonna look at you your body language how you're dressed people say all that but to me i don't i don't believe i i don't know i don't believe in that because you can be dressed as much as you want to be dressed but there's a god i mean i don't know how else to put it guys i carried everything they didn't even ask for one single thing people will tell you they'll ask you for this and that you have to dress up well of course you have to be the official you don't just want to appear them looking all scattered and wondering okay who are you why are you even dressed like that where do you think you're going don't scare nobody you know so of course uh the impression the impression the first impression you're gonna give the person interviewing you is is huge don't don't underestimate that but people over over overrate it they overrate it the only thing i can say is that when god says yes nobody can say no on my life that's how i say it that's me sorry to put it that way because you can do all the preparation you can have all the paperwork you can prepare how you're gonna answer everything but still be denied so how how there's no a legit way to just put this okay so um i prayed before i even went there and uh, my life has been a testimony it has been a testimony because i tried this effortlessly effortlessly like I had gone before, oh, this was my second time going to the U.S. Embassy. The first one was a church, it wasn't really crazy. The first one was like two years before that, there was a church conference that one of my, I love her, she gave me a chance to just go for a church conference. If she's watching this, she knows. I love her. Pastor Mary Bahati, she is a darling. She made it so easy for me to just process everything and gave me an invitation to go to a, one of the conferences that I believe she used to attend. And she told me, Mila, I think you love doing this. And she gave me everything and connected me to somebody who chatted with me, sent me papers and everything. I went to the embassy, guys, but I didn't get it. It was my first ever time, my first, first ever child to go to the U.S. It was under church-based conference, but I was denied. Being a leader in church, huh? So I was denied, but it wasn't the time yet because when the right time comes, God makes it happen. Okay, so it wasn't time yet. When it's in the fullness of time, no matter what, in the fullness of time, it happens, guys. So on my second trial was just a direct invitation from my now husband, Chris, and it was the easiest thing ever, okay?